Hi there and welcome to our midweek episode on Who Has Sports today. It's a brand new month which marks the opening of European football's transfer window. We have some stories of some movers and potential shakers coming up. But as it is the biggest sporting event currently in progress, we will begin with the French Open Tennis Championship. Today we'll see the completion of the quarterfinal matchups in both the men's and women's draws. Let's look at who has progressed to the semis and who will take the battle onto the clay today for a spot in the last four. This time we begin with the ladies. Italian Francesca Schiavone kept on course to defend her French Open title and booked a spot in the semis after losing the first set and trailing the second by 1-4 to battle her way back and win the encounter in 1-6, 7-5 and 7-5. She sets up a last four date with French pride, Marianne Bartoli, who needed only a straight sets win to dispose of Svetlana Kuznetsova. Today's focus will be on China's first ever quarterfinal appearance at Roland Garros, when Alina goes up against Victoria Azarenka, while Maria Sharapova meets Andrea Petkovic. Now to the men's result and matchups today, Roger Federer progressed as expected after defeating French favourite Gail Monfi in straight sets to set up a monster semi-final clash with Novak Djokovic tomorrow. Andy Murray, who finally defeated Viktor Trojki in the fifth set that was played a day later due to bad lighting the night before, will meet unseeded Argentine Juan Ignacio Chela today in the quarterfinals, while the one to watch will be the Nadal, so the Ling Tai. But the French organisers should be pleased with the fact that the world's top five men's players are all gunning for the last four spots in the championships. Now, before we move on to some football news from the Premier League, here's an update on Lewis Hamilton and his Ali G record. Maybe it's because I'm black comments. But besides that, he had, was also slagged by several drivers blaming him and his driving style for all the mayhem at Monaco on the weekend. But it was one of those instantaneous outbursts that leaves you regretting it the, day, the next day, as Hamilton posted four tweets to make peace with his fans and fellow drivers as per posted in his trademark shorthand style. The first one read, Hey guys, I wanted to apologize for last weekend's performance and also my comments after. I never meant to offend anyone. Uh, this was followed by, I would also like to say thank you to everyone on here for their positive messages and also to the angry messages. I can respect them both. Then he sent one out to his peers, to Massa and Maldonado. With the greatest respect, I apologize if I offended you. Both of you are fantastic drivers who I regard highly. And the last one was to his peeps, to my fans, lost and my fans won. I wish you nothing but love and happiness. God bless you. Onwards and upwards. Montreal next, Lewis. Well, he did what he did and he said what he said. But can an apology be accepted if it was a Twitter post? I don't know. I'll leave that to you. So we'll just move on with news from the Premier League. After Gary Neville's retirement, Manchester United will hang up another of its loyal servants' jersey or boots if you like. Paul Scholes. He made his debut for United 17 years ago. Well, to give you a better perspective, when he won his first Premier League title, he looked like this. And after 17 years, 676 appearances and 10 Premier League titles, he looks like this. United fans will remember him as a hard-working midfielder and a fantastic team player. And some of his accolades include 150 goals for the club, 66 England caps, 3 FA Cup titles, 1 Champions League crown and 2 League Cup medals. He has also scored 102 league goals and currently ranking him at number 18. While well, the rest of us, non-United fans, fondly know him as one of the worst tacklers proved by the stats as the fourth most book player in Premier League history. But of all his highs and lows, most of us are still trying to erase our memory of one of the most bizarre moments in his career when this happened. Well, if you successfully managed to block out that image, I'm sorry to have to refresh it. But uh, Scholes will still remain at United as he will now join the coaching staff. First assignment, advising the kids not to do stunts like that on the pitch. But with Scholes hanging up his boots, attention has swiftly shifted to Tottenham's Luka Modric. Though the Croatian has mentioned that he is happy at Spurs and doesn't want to leave the club. A statement from him while on international duty has alerted United, who are looking for a replacement for Scholes, plus Modric doesn't kiss men publicly, and has even attracted attention from Chelsea. Modric first says that his status at the club hasn't changed, but then confuses the press by saying, quotes, of course, if there will be an offer which will be good for Tottenham and also for me, then a transfer is possible. Then he pulls away, saying that he is satisfied at White Hart Lane, but raises the red flag to mention, but then again, when you experience playing in Champions League, you want to keep playing in this tournament. Is this guy bipolar or has the Croatian learned the art of mind games? 
Well, all I know is that this is the start of many more transfer stories that we'll be featuring right here on Hoo-Ha Sports in the months to come. So join me again tomorrow as there will certainly be more. Plus, we will also find out if an Asian makes it to the semi-finals of the French Open. Till then, I'm Patrick for the team saying it's bye for now.